I also was struck by this, and this is not to call our uh, our brother Joe Shasky out at all. This is to however this well no it's to <laughs> no, tell okay. it's to tell a story. Uh, sometimes these things are healthy reminders. Uh, may, you know when it comes to elections, uh, whatever, whatever there are a lot of opinions on in the world. I sometimes think it's healthy uh, when you can notice how two people, two smart people, can look at the exact same thing and come away with the exact opposite impression or opinion. Like, this to me felt like someone looking out the window of the car and going, sky's yellow. See that? The sky is yellow. And I'm like, that's blue. Nope. It's yellow. Really? Listen to this. This happened during our show yesterday. Shasky writes, losing Myers is clearly a huge blow to Joe Lacob and the Golden State Warriors. But how can you not see how maniacal Joe Lacob is to winning at everything? Lacob showed more human touch than most therapists when discussing Bob and what he meant to him and the Warriors. Joe is as good of an owner as we've seen thus far. I don't have an issue with, with sentence one. Or three. And I don't have an issue no, with sentence three. He's absolutely right but, about but, those two things. But sentence two, Lacob showed more human touch than most therapists when discussing Bob and what he meant to him and the Warriors. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I understand it because I don't. It's not in me to do that. And I'm so competitive and I know he is too. It's a really hard thing for me to understand why, but it's really not for me to understand why. I just want him to be happy. <laughs> I'm like, right. That, that felt that like was the not, opposite of human touch to me. And I would imagine that that's not the part that Joe is referring to in terms of human touch. There were parts where he talked about how great Bob was. Well, sure. And he was effusive in his praise for Bob Myers at times. Maybe that's what Joe was referring to. But when I read the tweet, I kind of had the same reaction in terms of I didn't really get a sense of the human touch being shown by Joe Lake. Let's, let's listen to a little bit more Joe. What's next? Bob addressed it, and I think he addressed it well, and I'm sure you'll ask a couple of questions, but look, we have a great organization. We believe in uh, bench strength. Some may think we don't, based on they criticized our bench uh, on the on the court sometimes, but uh, we do believe in bench strength, and within this organization, we have a lot of bench strength, and we have a lot of people that are really good at their jobs, and that uh, we're constantly training for situations like this. You can't always achieve it, but Bob has trained some great people in his organization, and I think they'll play a great role going forward. I'm not going to say what we're doing yet because I don't know what we're doing yet. I only learned of this decision this morning, and while we've been thinking about the possibility of it happening, certainly uh, knew it was a possibility, although I didn't want to admit that that was really a possibility to myself. It was a possibility, and so we thought about it, but it's not going to be something that we you know, rush into. We'll get it done when we get it done. We'll make the right decision for the organization and hopefully move forward. I think we're preparing for the draft, free agency, all those things. And I know Bob's, I'm going to work him to every last day till June 30th to be involved here, whether he knows it or not. Yeah. Oh. So uh, he'll be here for that. And um, I didn't know. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's the way it's going to be. <laughs> so I think we'll be prepared and we'll, we'll go forward and uh, it'll be good. I am just overwhelmed by the human touch and compassion from that exchange. Overwhelmed. I'm almost That crying. was even more cringy hearing it for the fifth time. Thank you. When Bob, uh, it's an awkward laugh. <laughs> almost, I mean, you can almost hear him say WTF, well, Joe. Well, and again, the, the visual side of it is he looks at his wife, smiles, and shrugs. It was almost like, sorry, honey, we got 30 more days. Yeah. That's what it looked like Turns to out me. we're not out of here. Yeah. This is not the end. <laughs> we get into the month of this, oh, of uh, phone calls at all hours of the night, and, you know, being... In the grinder still, because that job is a grind. And Bob is not going to apologize, or Joe's not going to apologize for the grind that he put Bob through, because that's how you win. You work the hardest, and you do the best, you do the most, and you churn out a winner. And that's what Bob did underneath Joe Lacob, and that's what Joe will demand of his replacement. Um, let's keep going with you at 888-957-9570. How about uh, Carlito in Alameda? Hey, Carlito, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, hey, hey, fellas, I'm enjoying a, a beer. Um, yeah. I'm going to talk mm. about this. Yeah. Um, beer. Uh, so, uh, I mean, look, I think the ownership thing is being a little overstated. I think when we compare, like, historical owners such as Al Davis, Jerry Jones, 
I think those, those owners are, are probably known as a little more difficult than Joe Lake. But I think, in a sense, Bob wants to quit while he's ahead because no matter what, I mean, the end of, of the dynasty is, is coming. Thank you. Um, oh, wow, that was very respectful. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Thanks. Carlito, for the, <laughs> for the call. Thanks. Uh, that'll Thanks. never, it'll never not be funny. <laughs> you can play it a million times. It'll never not be funny. Um, Al Davis is, you know, tougher than Joe Lacob. Maybe. Or is it just more public? I mean, I'll give you an example. I've heard this a hundred times behind the scenes. I wonder if you've ever heard it, right? So there's Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight would, like, throw chairs across the basketball court. Uh, he was caught on just video. Once. Yeah, caught on video hitting a kid one time. He choked a guy. All right, so there was that. Um, you ever heard anything like that about Coach uh, Shashevsky? Uh, not that overtly, but right. you know, you've seen him get red faced and get after somebody. I have heard that behind the scenes. Oh, no doubt. He's cut from the Bobby Knight cloth. There he played go. for Bobby Knight at so, Army. So, some of, sometimes, uh, there's the one who just does it right out in front of everybody. And then, uh, there, there's someone who is a little bit more covert ab- about it. Uh, plus, uh, let me say this for Joe Lacob. This could, this, you could take this as a compliment and, and maybe he should. Joe Lacob has essentially never had to go through any of the downtimes. And that's when the stuff usually comes out. Nobody wants to talk about the way Joe Lacob goes about his business because his business has been nothing but awesome. Al Davis or any of the other owners you want to talk about, there's the ups and there's the downs, relocation, oh, relocation again, ups, downs, ups, downs all over the place, people in, people out. Joe Lacob has had exactly what he talked about yesterday, continuity and winning, and that's it. But what happens when Myers leaves, Steph Curry leaves? What then? You know, are we going to learn a little bit more about it? So, um, you know, Joe Lacob is not those guys. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. I feel like we won't know a little bit more or we're talking a little bit more about it today than we have in the past. I've heard people say he's hard to work for. Um, a lot of bosses are hard to work for, but I, I, to me, we got a little bit of a window, a little bit of a glimpse of it yesterday. That's all. I think we've known all along that it's there, and now I do believe that Joe Lacob is square front and center in terms of what are you going to do now as far as moving this thing forward? Because coming up in X amount of time, you're going to have to deal with life without Steph, without Clay, without Draymond. Those guys are all in their mid 30s Steph is approaching his late 30s and you don't usually play in the NBA past 37 38 you get to Udonis Haslam the oldest player in the association might be 40 he's not the player that he once was so no matter what you do from here going forward with the GM spot the president of basketball operations spot you're going to have to do something about your roster and whoever takes that job mm. their number one task going forward is going to be to try to make this thing relevant and successful and all the rest of it because we all know as Warriors fans who've been around long enough to have remembered the lean years, the lean years are more prevalent than the winning years for any organization. Sure, of course. That's the way it works, and that's kind of what I mean. Like, I'm not sitting here telling you that the Warriors can't be good in five years. Uh, For the life of me, I don't see how uh, 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 unless another amazing generational NBA-changing player is just there, and and somehow they're able to acquire said player and build more continuity with a whole new roster. Like, I don't think of many situations in the NBA where that's happened overnight. And what's really funny is a lot of people who buy what Joe is saying have literally said that this year disproved the myth that they were selling. Two timelines, Dibs. Yeah. Got two timelines. Steph, Clay, and Dre, and then as soon as that's over, then it's going to be Poole, Wiseman, and Kaminga. A little bit of Moody sprinkled in, and man, championship again. Bob ne- Bob admitted that they had never used that terminology. That no. was a media creation, it two was. timelines. I don't, I'm not talking about right. the, the term, I'm talking about the approach. Yeah, the ideology, that sure. That was absolutely what they were trying to do, and this year, most of us walked out and went, well, it turns out that was ridiculous. Right. And can't believe we fell for it. And now people are believing that Joe's like, yes, we're going to be, we're going to be amazing next year, and the year after that, the year after that. So Steph leaves, can be amazing, 
I don't care what the rules are. Had James that's Wiseman Mike. been Tim Duncan, I'd buy it. Correct. Because that's how the Spurs did it. Right. Right. They but got James, a top pick, and they got a, a generational player, and they kept it rolling. Right. But James is a Pistons. Yeah, he is. And so that's... <laughs> You were worried there for a second. Yeah, it was. Uh, brought He's to you by- a Pistons off at getting <laughs> traded. <laughs> <laughs>